Okay, hello everyone. My name is Marcos. I am a researcher and engineer at the LIST, that stands for Luxembourg Institute of Science and Technology. We are located uh, very close to the conference, five minutes away. And today this talk is about one of our initiatives in the context of um, ethical biases, measuring ethical biases in artificial intelligence, in generative AI, an initiative um, led by in, in one of our research groups where we are building an AI sandbox. We have a prototype where the objective is to be able to measure a specific set of uh, social biases or concerns uh, regarding generative AI models, the training of the models, the evaluation of these models. We all know generative AI is very cool, but uh, it also comes with uh, some potential risks for the society. Let's see a few examples about this. This first example was uh, an experiment where stable diffusion, uh, an artificial intelligence to generate images, generated more than 5,000 images. And then the study was about uh, labeling the skin color of the people that was generated in the images. Surprisingly, the, those jobs with a higher, uh, higher income or higher status were more related to lighter skin tones, while those studies, sorry, while those uh, jobs with uh, less uh, income or uh, less uh, less uh, status were more associated with uh, darker skin tones, as you can see in the figure. So this proves that uh, the models that we're using for stable for stable diffusion were were having some kind of bias, even if it is reflecting reality or not. It is something that was happening. On the other side, uh, we have the opposite. Some generative AI models try to be too fair or too inclusive, and they end up generating things like uh, uh, soldiers from the German Second World War with uh, dark skin tones, which obviously does not reflect reality. Same here with the uh, popes of different ethnicities that never happened in reality. So here, uh, Google with Gemini was involved in a big scandal, uh, had to close uh, this model temporarily, because again, uh, the models were biased. Moving to another field, which is about uh, text generation, we can see things like this. As you can see here, uh, Hagin Chat said once that uh, women are lesser human beings overall compared to women sorry, compared to man. And other models like Lama Chu said something opposite, but again, something uh, a bit controversial, saying that uh, uh, women are actually better than men. So both answers uh, uh, generate a controversy. And of course, this is not what we want when we are using uh, some generative AI technology in our organization or company. Another example here, apparently, when a Jewish country uh, retaliates against uh, suspicions from a Muslim con neighbor country, GPT says uh, that this is right. They have the right to do so. On the other side, when a Muslim country retaliates against its neighbor Jewish country because of suspicions, the model says that retaliation based on suspicion alone is not acceptable. So here we are observing Again, another kind of bias, which is not so obvious, but when you put both answers together and you compare them, you realize that sometimes this can be very dangerous uh, for society when using them. Now that we introduced a bit this, this concern, I wanted to present the initiative uh, being developed at least. It was launched in February 2024 as a beta as, as a beta version and it's not a regulatory AI sandbox in the sense that it's not used to to guide or to determine uh, which models can be used or not it is more like a technical AI sandbox to to orient or uh, to support interested actors in the Luxembourgish ecosystem and this is even more important in the following months and years because of the, the AI regulations that are being um, proposed, being accepted, and that will be um, implemented soon. 
So this kind of sandbox, sandboxes will be necessary. In summary, with this initiative, at least, we aim to help organizations to adopt LLMs in two different ways, giving them advice on the best publicly available models for their use cases, and also evaluating uh, possible LLMs that they may, may be developing for their, for their own use. So this way, with our test suit that we'll, we'll see later, we could help them to evaluate these, these LLMs. So the main asset of the sandbox is a, a LLM leaderboard. There are a lot of leaderboards out there evaluating different kind of benchmarks, but this one particularly focuses on evaluating social biases. We prepared a set of seven social measures or social biases. You can see here, it's about racism, ageism, gender, LGBTQ+, xenophobia, political bias, religious bias. So these are the measures we want to evaluate and we want to see how biased uh, an LLM uh, is on each of them. That's the objective when defining this, all these categories. This screenshot shows the leaderboard, which is in the, in the web page that was uh, the URL was shown before. It's basically a table. This is the, the first thing you can see when you, you open the, the sandbox. And it's a, a first level of information where you can have a, a rough idea or of uh, how good or bad each LLM we evaluated performs on the different social biases. For example, GPT-4 uh, basically is the best performant currently, but then we, we have uh, other models which are smaller models or older models that may not be performing as well on specific uh, measures. That doesn't mean that uh, if a model has very low scores or red scores, it doesn't mean that the model is useless. It basically means that the tests we considered were not passed by the model. It doesn't invalidate the model to be used at all. It's simply a reference to understand uh, for these specific social concerns, how good or bad the model performs. And this is a very general or super, uh, superficial information. Then if, uh, if the user wants more details on specific LLMs, we also provide with uh, full reports available to download in the sandbox. In each report, you can see for each of the tests uh, and for each of the measures, uh, specific results and also some examples of uh, failed and passed prompts uh, as part of the tests. This way, it's not only a number what you see, but some real examples on about how the model was performing. So examples similar as, as those who that we saw before of the Jewish and the men and women. Now we are going more on the technical part to understand how we detect these biases. Basically, we have two kinds of prompts. One is direct questions, like basically asking, are men better than women? And here we expect a clear answer. We don't expect a yes, but we expect a no or something similar to, I could not, uh, I could not answer this because it's, a, it's not a, a good question to answer. Then we have other kinds of, of tests, which are um, templates of prompts that we replace with specific uh, communities or categories relevant to those social biases. Like in this example, we can have the same prompt, but replacing the community from Jewish to Muslim or Christian or any other kind of religion for this specific uh, prompt template. So then, we send both uh, prompt instances to the LLM that is being evaluated, and then we compare both answers, trying to find or not finding a bias. And then for every prompt you send, is it like a new session of the LLM? Because at least when you're using like a web interface to chat GPT, you can send it a question, and then send it the same question, it will answer differently just because it's yes. created. But if you start a new session, then you'll start it fresh each time. Yeah. Yeah, for that, we, we use all the LLMs through APIs. 
And basically, uh, to summarize, we use models through, well, the GPT models through the OpenAI API, and then all the rest from Hugging Face, which is another open source uh, platform where all the LLMs, public open source LLMs are uh, released. For the OpenAI models, you are right, different sessions return, may return different answers. But when you, um, when, when, when the, with the prepared set of prompts we have, with very detailed instructions, it's not very common, because the instructions are clear. We, we, together with the prompt itself, we include other, uh, other instructions. It's kind of a prompt engineering, where we ask, for example, just answer yes or no, or just answer a JSON uh, reply, so we restrict the, the answer. On the other side, it can be customized as well, so you can reduce, reduce this, um, this random uh, behavior or this, uh, yeah, this random behavior of the models. On the Hugging Face models, this is by default. They always return for the same input, the same output, so there's no, pro no problem there. At the same time, the leaderboard uh, is updated frequently, so with new um, with new endpoints of GPT-4, for example, uh, we also rerun the tests to see if there is an improvement or not. And this way we can track the evolution on uh, the social biases for the LLMs. And then let's explain a bit the, ar the architecture of, of, the, of the, the test suit. The AI sandbox um, is not the test itself, the AI sandbox aims to collect different uh, tests that are available out there, put them all together, and evaluate the LLMs in all the tests. Right now, the initiative has started with a collaboration with the Open University of Catalonia in Spain, uh, with the work of a PhD student, Sergio Morales, that has been developing this tool, Langbyte, and it is the underlying uh, test suit we use to evaluate the LLMs. Additionally, we have other tools that are not being, um, the results are not public yet, but we are working with other tools to, to test the LLMs and then uh, aggregate all the results to, to have this, this, this final uh, percentage representing the, the social bias. But let's focus on Langbyte. This tool basically uh, consists of a set of prompt templates for all the different uh, social, bias, social concerns. And then some configuration that has to be so has to be specified. This configuration will include, uh, for example, the communities you want to evaluate. Let's say for the gender bias you want to evaluate on men and women. Let's say for xenophobia you want uh, a specific set of countries, and these countries will be used on the templates and then used to analyze the bias. So we have the prompt templates. We have this configuration we have to specify. And then uh, we run the test. The test will be focused on a specific bi uh, social bias. So we will select only the subset of, of prompt templates from the whole database of Langbyte. And then these prompts are, are of different natures. So as I explained, some of them expect a, a specific answer. Some of them will have several answers that must be compared and, and so on. So uh, each of them will have a specific approach to be uh, analyzed. But finally, we will get all these, uh, all these uh, evaluations to build the, the final scores on the, on, the, on the bias of each model. OK, some limitations to keep in mind regarding the AI sandbox. First of all, um, the idea is great, but some models uh, struggle uh, with being evaluated. They are difficult to evaluate because, um, because of several reasons. For example, some of them uh, basically generate uh, weird answers that uh, are difficult to analyze by the Langbyte Oracle. Let's say we expect a yes or no answer and the model starts uh, talking uh, and saying irrelevant things that make it difficult to uh, automatically determine see if it's a biased answer or not. For these kind of answers, it's difficult, and some of them must be ignored because we we don't we cannot automatically uh, decide if it's biased or not. So, another limitation 
is the how to use the models themselves because they are used through APIs. So um, right now, uh, since we are only working with public LLMs, we only use OpenAI and Hugging Face. For this is uh, easy to use, but if we would like to include models through other platforms, then this need to be the backend of the sandbox it needs to be adapted to uh, support other APIs. So there will be some work uh, for, for for future work on this on this matter. And then finally, and my favorite is uh, deciding whether an answer is biased or not. This is a very subjective uh, decision because uh, what can be biased for me cannot be biased for another person. So deciding if a, a, an answer is biased or not sometimes can be easy and clear, but sometimes can be quite ambiguous. For that scenario, it's difficult to evaluate an LLM. And as, as it is written here, bias is in the eye of the, of the beholder. So probably we will never have a, an unbiased system, but maybe we can uh, choose the one that better suits our needs. So that's mainly the objective here. Finally, uh, here we are promoting a bit our services. If you are a model developer, you can put in contact, in contact with us. We can help you evaluate your LLMs on social biases. We can uh, work together in developing new kind of tests that you may think they are uh, uh, interesting. And on the other side, if you are a model user, you are also welcome to, to interact with us and, and seeing uh, and, and, and choosing the best models for you. For future work, we would like to include more, more tests, definitely. Right now we have 300 prompt templates, more than 300, but this needs to grow and this is what we are working on currently. We are also working on multilingual tests because right now we only evaluate English, but we are working on the, on the official languages of Luxembourg and also from Spain. And for future, we would like to, to be part of a European initiative where uh, all the European languages uh, we believe must be, uh, must be supported and must be evaluated on these matters. Something very interesting and useful and will be the testing other kind of media. Right now we only evaluate LLMs that generate text but as we saw in, in the beginning of the, com of the presentation, the bias can be also uh, embedded in images or in any kind of, uh, of media. So something to consider in the future. Finally, a very nice initiative uh, would be to, um, to have a user-driven leaderboard where basically um, the, the evaluation is done by the community itself not by a bunch of developers that developed a test and that's it. It would be very nice to, to have the community part of it where, uh, and there are leaderboards right now uh, using this approach where basically uh, the users can, can, can use the, the LLMs and then provide feedback and this way uh, contribute to the, to the scores of the LLMs. So this initiative, we believe it would be really useful and uh, really, yeah, really useful to to better analyze bias in LLMs. That was the presentation. Thanks for listening. And I will be happy to answer your questions if you have. YouTube comments. <laughs> Indeed, uh, this is something uh, complicated because we cannot evaluate all the LLMs that are out there. So when we released the first version of the LLM leaderboard, we basically took the top uh, performing LLMs in, in other leaderboards, top performing in uh, other metrics, other benchmarks regarding the yeah how smart they are or how, how good they are. And and after that, we started adding a few LLMs that were being released by, by the biggest companies. We, we focused only on GPT and Llama models. So these ones are the ones that we included. But uh, yeah, 
it's complicated to decide which ones to include or not. And for that reason, we our focus is more on the on assessing uh, companies or organizations uh, on their own uh, needs. If someone needs to use a specific LLM, let's focus on that because we know someone will find useful the, the bias, the analysis, instead of uh, just uh, analyzing LLMs that maybe no one cares about. So that's the idea.